Would uh, Jimmy McClellan please come up? Oops, there's one you didn't see. Gussie McClellan's brother, Jim. Gussie wasn't able to make it. Gussie McClellan, ladies and gentlemen, was born in Glace Bay, 1914, first year of World War I, and yes, the same year as Josie Lava. He was educated in the Glace Bay school system, more specifically New Aberdeen, one of the finer Glace Bay suburbs. If there are any here who've never been to Glace Bay, it's a place most eloquently described by the great Jack Dempsey, who Gussie brought in to ref a fight one time. When Dempsey arrived, he told Gussie Glace Bay was about three days from nowhere. <laughs> People often wonder aloud why a young boy would take up boxing. If you think about the options for a Cape Breton lad interested in sport, not of great stature, and without the means to buy a horse or a yacht or golf clubs, boxing starts to make a little more sense. Very few sports allow smaller athletes to compete only with athletes of like size. Well, whether you buy that little bit of philosophy or not, when Gussie turned 15, he took up boxing. Of course, like most first steps, it never entered his mind that it was going to become his life. Gussie was no dummy. He stepped into the ring seven times as an amateur and quickly decided if he's going to endure that much pain, he might as well get paid for it. <laughs> 1934, he went down to Boston. He went and trained at the Kelly and Hayes Gym, a very famous place. It was there that he met Al Clements, a big-time promoter trainer known best around Nova Scotia for managing the Liverpool great Tiger Warrington and Bobby Allen of Westville. He signed with Clements, and after three months of training, he began a professional career fighting first as a 118-pound bantamweight and later as a 126-pound featherweight. He fought around Boston until 1937, though he returned to Nova Scotia for good in 1938 in time to beat Kid Hart, a win which gave him the Eastern Canadian Featherweight Championship. He won some other big fights that year, knocking out Clyde Cleaver McGinnis and Walter Schultz of Halifax. He got a shot at the Canadian Championship, losing the title to Kid Lance in a thriller. The hall was jammed to capacity. The bout, as described in the local press, was of sterling quality. Gory enough to please those who like to see the crimson flow, and minus the useless dancing about, exhibited far too often in Cape Breton rings. Especially disappointed because he had earlier beaten Lance twice, Gussie McClellan, at age 25, turned to other aspects of the sport. He knew boxing well. He could look back at a pro record, 40 wins, 7 losses, and 2 draws. He moved on to become the savior of, the boxing, of boxing on the island. He became manager, trainer, matchmaker, and referee. He succeeded because he was one of those few men bright enough to handle the business end of things, and yet never so far away from the boys that he became something apart from them. He became the referee of choice for the big matches in the province. He refereed both Kid Howard and Armand Savoy fights, Savoy winning the first and the great Nova Scotian champion Kid Howard winning the Canadian championship in the second. He refed the great Clyde Gray-Kevin Otis fight. But he was best known as a promoter, a guy from 1939 to 1970 promoted more than 500 fights from Cape Breton to Toronto. Not all of them made a fortune. He always swore that the first fight he promoted in 1939 netted him no more than car fare home from the Glace Bay Fire Department Hall. He thought that was as bad as it got until he promoted a fight at the Glace Bay Forum one night with partners Bill Gillis and Bill Foote. The three of them walked the two miles home because their joint profit was 35 cents. <laughs> whether, they money, whether they made money or not, fans knew that a McClellan promoted fight was going to be a crowd pleaser. After a big fight in the Halifax Forum, which drew about 4,000 and did make a lot of money for the promoters, one of Gussie's partners, Hugh Gillis, remarked how they'd made some additional money because no one had cashed in the winning ticket on the fight pool. Gussie pulled a ticket out of his pocket. Damn it if it wasn't the winner. <laughs> Gillis decided he'd never open his mouth again. <laughs> there are always expenses in the fight game, very hidden ones at times. McClellan wasn't quite so lucky when he brought in an African fighter who arrived with no coat. Hall of Famer, you heard him mentioned earlier tonight, Buddy Day, who passed away after a long bout with lung cancer this year, loaned him a parka, which was never returned. Gussie had to buy a replacement parka. 
Gussie McClellan promoted more Canadian and British Empire fight, title fights than any other promoter. He promoted all the fights of the West Bay Road's George Rockaby Ross, including his Canadian championship bout against Len Wadsworth. Ross, some of you will remember, we inducted to this hallowed hall a few years ago. Many of the fights he promoted took place in the Glace Bay Forum, a venue which opened just about when he started promoting fights. It served as a hockey arena in the winter, and in the off-season, frequently the 3,000 seats were full for many a McClellan fight. He managed somehow to convince many of the greatest boxers in North America that fighting in Glace Bay was going to be good somehow for their careers. Not all of them went home enamored. A Boston manager got off the train in Sydney. He made the remark that the train had stopped every time the damn engineer had seen a cabbage patch. <laughs> Among those who came to the Bay were George Shavalo, who later went the distance with Muhammad Ali for the heavyweight championship of the world. He also brought in Yvonne Durrell, who went on to fight Archie Moore for the world light heavyweight crown. In the 50s, he promoted both of Blair Richardson's fights with Gomi O'Brennan. Gussie's biggest night ever as a promoter was when Richardson beat Brennan for the British Empire middleweight crown in 1965 at the Miners Forum for a maritime record-breaking gate of $24,000. The gate size wasn't broken till Gussie's Halifax Forum uh, card in the 1970s, which included both Clyde Gray and Lawrence Hafey. He promoted the great world-class champion Art Hafey. He promoted Les Gillis, Barry Sp Sponigle, Ronnie McNeil, Kid Adshade, Gramps Kiley, Willie Williams, Gordy McDougall, Johnny Davison, and Canadian champions Tyrone Gardner and Dave Downey. He was the promoter of the great Tiger Warrington Hobo Williams fight. He promoted Leoma, who later fought Ezra Charles for the world heavyweight title in Madison Square Garden. Gussie McClellan now resides in the veterans wing, the Cape Breton Hospital. And while his memories sometimes get a bit mixed up, they still include the many times he was an initiator in his profession. It was he who first introduced pro-am boxing to the maritime. It was he who started program boxing cards. It was he who introduced closed circuit boxing to Cape Breton. Perhaps his greatest sporting achievement was the press club, which he ran successfully for years on the Esplanade in Sydney. For Metro people unfamiliar with the Sydney Press Club, suffice it to say it was the Diana Suites of Cape Breton. <laughs> Gussie had a rare ability to make difficult decisions while keeping hurt, hurt feelings to a minimum. Regulars at the press club one night were therefore surprised when he took a rather unpopular stand when asked to settle a debate between a drunken group from Glace Bay and another drunken group from Sydney. They, of course, were into the very important argument over which was the better place to live. <laughs> they figured Gussie would be the ultimate arbiter since he'd been reared in Glace Bay but spent most of his adult life in Sydney. Gussie said the question was easily answered. Glace Bay was better. How do you figure that, said one irate loser. He said, that's easy, Gussie, said. On a Saturday night, if you live in Glace Bay, you can always go to Sydney. If you live in Sydney, where the rumor is you going to go? <laughs> Gussie McClellan, ladies and gentlemen, was honored in 1979 with election to the Canada Boxing Hall of Fame. There's no question that what he's known throughout North America is an outstanding boxing promoter but it was at home that he made his most indelible mark. In 48, he was picked by the Cape Breton Boxing Commission as being the most active Canadian Federation boxing promoter in all of North America. Gussie McClellan's parade of champions saved a dying sport when it needed help. Nova Scotia boxers are still bringing incredible honors to the province. There were many who would say that, the, that this wouldn't be the case if Gussie McClellan hadn't left the sport a lot cleaner than it would otherwise have been had he not worked so hard throughout his lifetime. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to present to you a man who promoted fights in Halifax, Glace Bay, Sydney, New Glasgow, North Sydney and Toronto, a man described by many of those in the know as the greatest all-round boxing sportsman in the history of Nova Scotia, <coughs> Mr. Augustine Gussie McClellan. At this time, it is a great pleasure to uh, ask one of the uh, great curling stars of modern times in Nova Scotia, Ms. Penny LaRock, to come forward to make the presentation to Jimmy.
Let me walk you over to the center of the stage here. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, for, for just a couple of mischievous moments tonight, I was tempted to pass him off as Gussie <laughs> because there's a tremendous similarity. You've heard that before. Yes. About the same size. Pretty much. I had more hair. Or... <laughs> you had more hair, didn't we all? <laughs> You know, when we, when we go over Gussie's record as a promoter, uh, and he was so successful for so long, there had to be one key to it all. What was it? I counted the money. <laughs> yes, and he would do very well in that department if he could catch you. Uh, I always felt that Gussie had a tremendous sense of matchmaking. That he could, he could match two fighters, didn't have to be the two best fighters in the world, but they always made for a good fight because he picked opposite styles. He was very careful in the matchmaking. Uh, he always wanted a certain type of fighter against another certain type of fighter. Uh, in other words, he wouldn't want a fellow that would fight uh, and run. He would want one to match that fellow. A boxer and a puncher. And a puncher, yes. He would never put two uh, southpaws in against each other, for instance. Made a terrible fight. No, not at all. What did Gussie always regard as his finest hour, his greatest promotion? Well, I don't know. I suppose it would be that uh, one in Glace Bay. There was also one in Moncton and the one in Halifax here that drew about forty thousand dollars between Gray and. Uh, Why do you always talk in terms of money? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> because that's what it's all about, folks. I did clerical work all my life, and I counted money all my life, so that's why I like it. That's all. <laughs> uh, let me help you out a little bit with that. You're talking about the Gomeo Brennan Blair Richardson fight in Glace Bay, which made, as Andy pointed out, $24,000. Now we finally found out how much Clyde Gray and, and uh, Chris Clark m uh, drew in Halifax at the Metro Center for two fights. 11,000 for each fight. That's 40,000 and 80,000. Gussie held out on us for a long time, you know. Well, he was very careful. <laughs> he was afraid of the income tax. <laughs> it was very hard to get a figure out of it. <laughs> well, I think in fairness too, uh, Gussie was part of, although he was the, the leading promoter in, in Cape Breton for many, many years and in Halifax, he also combined to form a great partnership with the late Alvin Brown. Yes, uh, Alvin Brown was a perfect old partner for Gussie. He was very quiet and uh, level-headed, of course. And, and looked after the money. And he looked after the money, too. So he had two people looking after the money. <laughs> and Clary Harris, the big three. At one point. At, w at one time, yes, early on, yes. yes. <coughs> what do you regard as the greatest fight he ever put on? Well, I don't know. They're all the same to me. I, I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> it was out back counting. As long as there was a good gate. <laughs> Jimmy, thank you very much. Convey our warmest greetings to a great guy, Gussie McClellan.